will I have sex again? How will I manage to be a dad if I want to be a dad? How can I get around the house? I mean, it goes on and on because you know, with no legs, you don't know what you can and cannot do when you're laying in the hospital. And probably the worst part about it was nobody came in to tell me how to do it. And what I mean was nobody came in with double above knee amputee come in to tell me how to do it. It's, there's a difference between somebody telling you how what I read in a book and what I actually do. And that for me was probably the most part, just not knowing. And again, when as soon as you leave the hospital, as soon as you leave the hospital, you still don't know. And you just learn by it's trial by fire, really. How will I ever be able to take care of myself and not have to depend upon my husband? That was a huge deal for me, and that was one of the things that as soon as I found out that I was going to get amputated, that how was my husband's life going to really remain the same where he did not have to take care of me? And that was a big hurdle for the first probably two and a half, three months of my recuperation period is because I really am a very independent woman. I very rarely ever ask him to do anything for me before the amputation. And man, I hit that block road when I knew that I would require some assistance. So that was one of the things as I sat there and right before, the day before the amputation and then in the following days afterwards, that was the one gap that I needed to answer for myself was how am I going to get back to living my normal life where I don't need to depend upon my husband. That would probably be going out on the woods, hunting. Hunting and fighting fires again. Uh, the firefighting is, I'm still on the job, not as physical as it used to be anymore. I'm more of a, a truck engineer and tank, tanker driver. Um, I wanna get back to being fighting fires on the hose line again, but until then, I'm still working that way. Um, one was obviously I was a musician when I got hurt and uh, had an amputation. So I'm like, well, how am I gonna do this now? And the other, believe it or not, of all things was uh, getting back on my motorcycle. Those were ironically the two biggest things that I, I worried about out of everything else in life. Those were the two that stuck out the most. You know, hygiene, everything. I mean, it starts from there to the work, to taking the garage out or the garbage out, to everything. I mean, you lay there and, you, you know, I was just wondering. I guess the whole thing was just sitting there, you know, with wonder of what's next. I got out of my first surgery, everything was covered up. I couldn't tell. So up until that point, I still thought life might go on as normal when I was told that my hand was actually amputated. It didn't sink in for a few hours. And then the very first thing I thought of was, I'm not gonna be able to ride my Harley anymore. My life is over. That was, that was my literal thought. My life as I know it is over. This is, this is the, the end. I'm, I'm disabled and my quality of life is going to go down. It's gonna suck. And uh, you want to see a grown man cry? Tell him he can't ride his Harley anymore. She's still an infant. And they're like, how is she going to crawl? How is she going to get dressed on her own? Um, and they did. I did occupational therapy um, when I was about six months old to learn how to crawl with a prosthetic and utilize it in daily activity. Um, for me, I mean, I guess the only time I would ever have that happen is trying a new thing. Like you want to do gymnastics. How am I going to get around and be able to participate in that? Or, you know, you want to play soccer? Well, what would be the best um, position to play? So I think just kind of tackling that question as it came up, if there was something new, I mean, even motherhood, like, how am I going to do that with one hand and trying to come up with, with techniques that'll work. Do my makeup again. Um, and then a lot of hand things. Um, I kind of, thought that I'd be able to walk again. I don't know why, you know, cause it wasn't a guarantee, but um, I just really wanted to eat 
And, but like, I've been able to do so much more than I thought I'd be able to do, if that makes sense. But there wasn't one set thing that I'm like, oh, my mom said in the hospital, oh, so you're going to be disabled your whole life. I'm like, we'll see about that. You know, I, I didn't really take that to heart, really. You know, I didn't, I didn't really take that word as a, oh no, you know, because for me, it was like, okay, sure. But I wasn't too worried about not being able to do too much. I really didn't have much doubt. I was just thankful I was alive. 